They're coming in over Houston, Texas. I'm flying here from Hollywood for the Spacerama, which starts this year's U.S. Treasury School Savings Program. We'll show you the way Houston got things started. Actual pictures of the events that took place. And maybe you can do something like this in your town. Here's a chance for all of us kids to become junior astronauts. So get ready for a real Houston welcome. I'm Jane North. Dennis the Menace, that is. But today, I'm not a menace at all. I've got a job being helpful here in Houston, Texas. Helping the United States Treasury Department kick off this big junior astronaut stamp and bond drive. They picked Houston, Texas to start the bond drive because of its terrific record last year. The kids of Houston bought more stamps and bonds than anybody. One of the first things they did was throw a big banquet. That's Mr. McClain, president of the bank, introducing Postmaster Elder, chairman of the savings stamp drive in Houston. At the party, I met some very special boys and girls, the children of the astronauts. Marty Shira said that he just started his new savings stamp book. And Scott Grissom said he's almost ready to turn his in for a bond. After the banquet, we all went to the Houston Music Hall Auditorium for the big show. It all started with the real pictures of astronaut Carpenter's flight. At the top of the towering gantry, after the long night of preparation, Scott Carpenter is ready for his entrance into the pages of history in a spacecraft named by him. The opening into Aurora 7 is small, and inside is a miracle of electronic gear. Liftoff is an earth-shaking controlled explosion. The booster gains speed, hurtling on toward its proper orbital path. In orbit, everything is seen with new eyes. The horizon, the earth, seem unreal in their beauty. Almost before he knew it, came the moment for landing. The helicopter rescue was quick, efficient. The life raft is dropped. The pickup gave Scott Carpenter his one real moment of worry as he was dunked in the water before being pulled up to safety. Scott Carpenter's flight is over. Once again, one of us had seen the stars and returned to tell us about it. When you see the kind of job Lieutenant Commander Carpenter did in that film, you really want to help with the space program. And we can, all us kids. We can buy stamps and bonds and take part in all these historical events. Right now, we're sending up mercury capsules. But tomorrow, there'll be two men up there, in the Gemini. Project Gemini is a two-man Earth orbital mission. It is an intermediate step between Projects Mercury and Apollo. Gemini will reveal man's capabilities during extended periods of time in space. Blue techniques for bringing together two orbiting vehicles will be determined and demonstrated. These techniques, developed in Earth orbital missions, will contribute much to Project Apollo, in which two space vehicles will rendezvous in lunar orbit during man's voyage to the moon and back. As he nears the Earth's surface, a paraglider will free him from the uncertain drift of a parachute driven by the winds and give him the relative precision of maneuverable flight combined with the capability for a gentle touchdown. Just as we have learned from Project Mercury, so will we learn from Gemini as we continue our manned exploration of space. Boy, I'd sure like to go up in one of those. I asked Mr. Wilson to go up in one of those with me, but he said he'd rather see me go up alone. Actually, on my television show, Mr. Wilson did send me up in a Mercury spacecraft all by myself. But it was a dream, really. I guess a lot of us kids dream about being astronauts. Fifteen, 
14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. seconds to engine cutoff. Capsule separated from booster. A-OK, -okay, Mr. Wilson. Roger, minus one. Are you ready to perform your first experiment in space? Affirmative. Space helmet open. Roger. Take a deep breath and start on the count of three. One. Two. Three. Did it work? Congratulations! You have successfully completed the first bubblegum blow-up in space. Astronaut to Wilson Control, astronaut to Wilson Control, completing first orbit, preparing to eat lunch. Roger, men is one. Oh, gee, Mom forgot to put ketchup on it. Uh, don't go away, Menace One. We'll take care of that. Boy, thanks, Mr. Wilson. Roger, Menace One. What is your position now? I'm approaching the coast of California again. Uh, uh, you'd better prepare for re-entry. Gee whiz, can't I go around a couple more times? No, no, it's my lunch time now. Besides, your fuel's running low. Prepare to fire retro rockets. How do I do that? It's the third button on the right. Not that button, Dennis. That's the jet roll button. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis! thing. You're a junior astronaut. That's right. You see, kids, they've got a great thing this year. When you buy a savings stamp, they give you a certificate making you a junior astronaut. And it's signed by the seven Mercury astronauts. After the scene from my show, we saw a terrific film about the three-man Apollo spacecraft that's going to the moon. Watch. The Apollo spacecraft will consist of three modules. The command module will carry the three-man crew together with guidance, communications, and life support systems. The service module will contain propulsion systems for mid-course maneuvers, as well as for entering and escaping the lunar orbit. The lunar excursion module will carry two crew members to the surface of the moon, along with scientific instruments, communications, and guidance systems. At the proper predetermined time, the S-4B will be separated bearings will be jettisoned, and the lunar excursion module will be repositioned to a nose-to-nose -nose attitude with a command module. While the spacecraft is coasting in its lunar orbit, two members of the crew will transfer to the lunar excursion module through the hatch at the connection point between the two vehicles. After preparations are completed, the lunar excursion module will separate from the command and service modules which will remain in lunar orbit. Then, through a carefully blended combination of manual control and automatic systems operation, the vehicle will be lowered toward the lunar surface. It will be able to hover, and if necessary, move laterally, so that the crew can select the touchdown point. 
Before taking any other action, the two lunar explorers will prepare for relaunching. Photographs and samples of the lunar surface will be obtained. Apparatus for continued operation and transmission of scientific data back to Earth probably will be left on the moon. The crew will fire the lunar launching engine at a precisely determined instant to enter a transfer ellipse calculated to rendezvous with the mothership after traveling part of the way around the moon. After proper orientation, the lunar excursion module will complete the docking maneuver. The two lunar explorers will transfer back into the command module. Their lunar excursion module probably will be left in lunar orbit to save weight on the return trip. After the command and service modules are thoroughly checked out and all calculations are confirmed, the Apollo spacecraft will be fired into its trajectory for return to Earth. Following mid-course corrections and just before entering the Earth's atmosphere, the service module will be jettisoned and the command module will be oriented for re-entry. A drogue parachute will deploy to stabilize the vehicle. This will be followed shortly by the main parachute system, which will gently lower the command module to Earth, probably on land rather than at sea. I'm John Powers. You would probably know me better if I said, this is Mercury Control. We've heard at Cape Canaveral that boys and girls all over the country are supporting our Treasury Department's saving stamp program and becoming junior astronauts to support our nation's space program. Colonel Powers, I know you've been pretty busy with your work, but I want you to know that all us junior astronauts are right behind you. It takes a lot of money to put a man up in space, doesn't it? It sure does. Uh, we're spending money of the order of billions of dollars, and we need all of the support and help we can get from all of the boys and girls in the country. Yes, sir. We're getting children all over the country to be backup pilots to the astronauts. And we're going to buy saving stamps to keep them up there in space. This school won the prize for the most students buying the most stamps and bonds. On a special stamp day, your teacher will have things ready. Just bring along your stamp book. Don't forget that in helping your country, you're helping yourself. Because in time, your $18.75 bond earns interest to become $25. So buy those stamps and make this the best year ever. And join with me and all the children of Houston as we take this special pledge. I hereby pledge myself, I pledge myself as a junior astronaut, as a junior astronaut to back up the United States Savings Stamp Program. And in this way, to show the astronauts who risked their lives in space for me that I will give as unselfishly as they have given. That's very good. I know, and after you again, a junior astronaut. Thank you.